Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys at Magic. This is Hunter and Shane. Say what up, Shane. What's up, nerds? We are back doing another pre-con upgrade to the Bloomboro pre-con decks. That is right. Going ahead and trekking along. This is the $100 upgrade to Peace Offering. That's right, Shane. You had the opportunity to go ahead and upgrade the kind of group hug style deck. Um, but before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, this is the face commander. That's right. It's Miss Bumbleflower. If you wanted to see this deck upgraded with Mr. Foxglove, check the description for our Patreon. It's over there on our Patreon exclusively to Patreon, as well as all the other backups. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started, Shane. Talk to me about this deck. Talk to me about Miss Bumbleflower and kind of the direction you took this. Out of the box, this deck is group hug, like you said. So we're going to kind of just keep leaning into that. Miss Bumbleflower is one, a green, a white, and a blue for a 1-5 rabbit citizen. They have Vigilance, and it says whenever you cast a spell, target opponent draws a card. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature. It gains flying until end of turn. It also says if this is the second time this ability is resolved, this turn you draw two cards. So we're going to be casting stuff. We're going to be letting our opponents draw some cards, which typically you've seen us, let's say, a million times. We don't want to help our opponents, but this deck literally just wants to help your opponents until, you know, the very end when you turn the corner and stop helping your opponents. But it's going to be pretty fun. We're going to be helping everyone. Peace, love, man. Peace and love. That's right. Miss Bubbleflower sounds like all the help everybody needs. <laughs> uh, so let's not get the people waiting. Let's go ahead and start. Let's talk about the additions into this deck. What? Let's start with some uh, creatures here. Let's do it. Well, a lot of the deck, like I said earlier, People are going to be drawing cards, and you're going to be helping them draw cards. So this whole section is going to be stuff that helps your opponents draw cards, but then helps you. The first of which is Council of Four. Three, a white and a blue for a 0-8 human noble. It says whenever a player draws their second card during their turn, you draw a card. It also says whenever a player casts their second spell during their turn, you create a 2-2 white knight creature token. Pretty good. You're going to be giving them cards. They're going to be just drawing cards, and they're going to be benefiting. So, you know. You help them, they help you. Yeah, scratch my back, scratch yours type situation. I like exactly. it. Exactly. One that is not so much scratch their back, but fairy mastermind is one in a blue. A 2-1 fairy rogue with flash and flying. It says whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you draw a card, and then you can pay three in a blue. Each player draws a card. This is just, again, capitalizing on your opponent's drawing cards, which they'll do anyways. There is that bottom text, so I guess you could help them a little bit, uh, but this card is just kind of like, hey, you drew another card. I'm going to draw another card. Yeah, card draw, very important in this deck because you want to be casting multiple spells to get your commander to trigger too. So, like. Very true. Another one I'm going to be putting in is the second Doctor. Two, a white, and a blue for a 2-4 Time Lord Doctor. Players have no max hand size. And it also says at the beginning of your end step, each player may draw a card. Each opponent who does can't attack you or permanents you control during their next turn. That's a very powerful ability because... People are greedy. They will take that card draw, and then they just can't attack you. Yeah, I will be the greedy one that says, I will gladly take a card, please. <laughs> Another card I'm throwing in is a newer card, actually. Socrates, Athenian teacher. One, a white and a blue for a 0-4 human advisor. They have Defender, and it says Socrates has hexproof as long as it's untapped. It also says you can tap it until end of turn, target creature gains. If this creature would deal combat damage to a player, prevent that damage. This creature's controller and that player each draw half that many cards rounded down. You're kind of kind of just control combat from now on if this card's on the field. Granted, you're going to be drawing, they're going to be drawing. But that's pretty good because, again, this whole deck cares about you drawing and them drawing. So this is just like a super awesome include. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite cards to come out in a while. I've said it a million times, but... I'm very excited to actually get to play with it now. Dream Tide Whale is going in the deck. Two and a blue for a 7-5 whale. It has Vanishing 2. So if you remember what Vanishing means, this creature enters the battlefield with two time counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from it. When the last time counter is removed, sacrifice it. It also says whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, proliferate. Pretty strong. They're going to be casting spells. You can proliferate the Vanishing counters, so hopefully you'll keep a 7-5 around. But your commander is going to be putting counters on stuff. So this guy can put in a ton of work. Yeah, this uh, this is pretty good because you're going to be making a lot of people draw cards, which causes a lot of people to play multiple spells, which causes this to stick around for a long time and just 
get in for seven five damage. Yeah. The last creature I'm going to be throwing in here, little controversial. I promise you, we're not doing the shenanigans of like <laughs> moving zero cost equipments to take advantage of them. But we're putting in Nadu Winged Wisdom. For one, a green and a blue, it's a 3 4 bird wizard. Got flying, and it says creatures you control have. Whenever this creature becomes a target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. This ability triggers only twice each turn. I'm sure everyone in their grandma has seen this card now. This card's really good in this deck, though, because you're going to be targeting stuff to put counters on them, therefore taking advantage of them. Like I said, there is no shenanigans to like infinitely do this. It's just we're just using good old value, not you. <laughs> yeah, very controversial, like you said. Uh, a lot of people think this is going to get banned in modern very quickly, which is why the price is affordable. Um, but who knows? Might be banned in EDH. But it's not the face commander. You're not doing the shenanigans, like you said, so I'll accept it. Thank you. It's just, hey, we're using it fairly-ish. Fairly-ish. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the non-permanent spells. It looks like you got a couple sorceries instants, maybe? Yeah, I'll start off with my sorcery here. The deck out of the box has a, a few clunky ways to quote-unquote board wipe. And you'll see when I get to the removes that I cut one of them. So I wanted to add another board wipe that I like a lot. And I'm adding in Supreme Verdict. So one, two white and a blue. It's a sorcery. The spell can't be countered and destroy all creatures. The spell can't be countered part, I think, is pretty relevant. And it's just a really nice way to clear everything. If, in fact, you're behind, you will be having a lot of, you know, like I said, group hugging and hopefully not being attacked as much. But if you do need to, this is a great button to just push and clear the board. Mm -hmm. The next one I'm putting in is an instant that come out of the new set in Bloomberg, actually. And this is Dawn's Truce. One in a white for an instant. It has gift a card which is the new mechanic out of Bloomboro. You may promise an opponent a gift as you cast the spell. If you do, they draw a card before its other effects. And then its other effects is you and permanence you control gain Hexproof until end of turn. If the gift was promised, permanence you control also gain Indestructible until end of turn. This is just a really good way to protect your board. You're going to help people with draw cards, you know, so that's relevant. Sometimes you might not need to do that, though. And I think the flexibility of this card is just really good, and I like it a lot. Yeah. Fits perfectly with your kind of group hug theme. Who do you want to be friends with? Gift them a card. Exactly. That's the that's the beauty of the, the gift mechanic too. Like I know you said it a couple times, but you could be gifting cards to anybody. Just like you get one, whatever you get. It's great. <laughs> and then the next one I wanted to add in, I think it's awesome. Super on flavor for the deck. Everybody lives for one and a white. It's an instant. All creatures gain hexproof and indestructible on the turn. Players gain Hexproof till end turn. Players can't lose life this turn. And players can't lose the game or win the game this turn. <laughs> if we're a group hug deck, man. We're like, everybody's living. Everyone will be happy. This is just a good way to kind of be like, that person right there is about to pop off and win. Or that person's doing something stupid. Nope, everyone lives. Yeah, that person's about to win. That person's about to lose. Let's just keep it steady. I yeah, like it. very on theme. It is super on theme. And I'm seeing some enchantments here. What about these ones? The first enchantment I'm throwing in is Ghostly Prison. It's two and a white for an enchantment that says, creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. You're a pillow fort deck. You're a group hug deck. You're going to want to be kind of sitting back and preventing people from attacking you. Fantastic way to do that. The next one I'm throwing in is Smothering Tithe. Three and a white. It's an enchantment. It says, whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If that player doesn't, you create a treasure token. I uh, know everyone knows this card, but we're helping our opponents draw cards, so why not capitalize and make treasure for that? Yeah, the synergy right there is pretty good with Smothering Tithe. Um, sure. So much card draw on this deck. So many treasures are going to happen. Yeah. And then similarly, Trouble in Pairs. Two and two white for an enchantment. If an opponent would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. Whenever an opponent attacks you with two or more creatures, draws their second card each turn, or casts their second spell each turn, you draw a card. So that bottom part basically just says, if an opponent plays magic, draw a card. <laughs> and in your deck, it's fantastic. Yeah, always a good card in Trouble in Pairs since it's been played. You know, and then also that top part is kind of relevant because there is a card in their deck that gifts an extra turn. There you go. Only play that card with this card on the field. <laughs> 
Uh, and finally, I see you touched the mana base just a little bit. I did the thing, man. I love doing it. I'm maybe a broken record at this point, but I put all the bottom lands in. So Bountiful Promenade, Rejuvenating Springs, and Sea of Clouds, they're all in the deck. They all come in tapped unless you have two or more opponents, which you should hopefully always have, and that's at the end of the game. And they tap over their respective colors. Bountiful is a green and a white. Rejuvenating is a green and a blue. And Sea of Clouds is a white and a blue. Put them in. Put them in. Easy to the point. They are the EDH lands. They should be in every pre-con. I'm a broken record at this point. Please, wizards, do this. But let's go ahead and move on to the cuts. You had to make some cuts here to make room for all those new spicy cards. Talk to me. We'll start with the creatures. Yep. I had to make some room. Uh, I'm just going to be chopping off some stuff that wasn't all too fantastic. The first of which is Coiling Oracle. A green and a blue for a 1-1 Snake Elf Druid. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. It's a cool little one-time effect. The amount of cards on this deck is dumb. You've kind of already seen what we've added, and then there's already a bunch in it still, so this kind of was an easy cut for me. The next one I'm going to be cutting is Fabro. Fabro, yeah. The next of which I'm cutting is Fabro Elder. It's one a green and a white for a 0-0 Tree Folk Druid. It's got Vigilance, and it says Fabro Elder gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control, and you can tap it for each color among permanents you control. Add one mana of that color. It was a kind of a cute little dork. Uh, I just kind of thought that, you know, it's not going to be tapping for too, too much, but there are other ways to make a bunch of mana and search up for land. So I just kind of thought that it wasn't too important. And then the last one I'm cutting was interesting, but ultimately I don't think I like it. Octomancer, three, a green and a blue for a three, three frog druid. Gift an octopus. It says at the beginning of each end step, create a token that's a copy of target creature token that entered the battlefield this turn. That's cute for the time you gift an octopus, but like, after that, I don't know how you're going to be reliably copying tokens that entered that turn, so... I thought it was cute. Didn't really like it. Yeah, it is cute. I mean, if you like you said, if you had a way to go ahead and continuously create a token every turn, I mean, if you had Smothering Tide, I guess you could do it with a treasure. But, yeah, Octomancer one-time effect kind of thing just make an octopus but then you might get hit with an 8-8 octopus somewhere down the line and that's not fun that's true the next creature i'm going to be getting rid of is the board wipe that i kind of alluded to realm cloaked giant it is an adventure so the adventure is cast off for three and two white destroy all non-giant creatures and then the creature itself is five and two white for a seven seven with vigilance mm, i don't know i just didn't really like the fact that it's super heavy, and then it's just a 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't know. I, I really never enjoy this as a board wipe. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it. it's very weird because the board wipe is basically saying, hey, wipe your entire board, because when you cast that part, this an adventure, so this giant is not even on the field. So you're not going to be board wiping this regardless if it was on the field, but you can't. And then it's just 7 for 7-7. Seven, seven. That's a lot. Yeah. So I cut it and then I put in, like I said, Supreme Verdict, just as good, if mm -hmm. not better. Mm -hmm. The next one I'm going to be cutting is Sphinx of Enlightenment, four and two blue for a five five Sphinx. It's got flying and it says when it enters the battlefield, target opponent draws a card and you draw three cards. That's pretty good. But ultimately, we have so much card draw and this is just like a one time effect. We have no way to flicker this or bounce it or anything like that. So it's going to be a one time draw. Pretty strong. But we added a lot of stuff that's just continually drawing. So I thought it'd be pr pretty easy to cut this. Yeah. Sphinx is uh, an interesting card, but easy cut. And looks like we're going back into the non-permanent department. Talk to me about the sorcery and instance again. Yep. I'm cutting one sorcery, and that's Tempt with Discovery. Three and a green. It has a tempting offer. So search your library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. Each opponent may search their library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield. For each opponent who searches a library this way, search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Then each player who searched their library shuffles. Mouthful. Basically, you're going to get a land. You're going to let everyone else try to get a land. And if they do get a land, you will get another land. Pretty cool. I liked that ability. Uh, we're helping our opponents a lot. I understand. 
This is a group hug deck. But ramping, that's kind of scary too, but uh, I don't know. I ultimately decided to cut it. There are other tons of ways to ramp in this deck. One sorcery, a little heavier. I got it out of there. Intellectual offering is four and a blue for an incident that says, choose an opponent. You and that player each draw three cards. Choose an opponent. Untap all non-land permanents you control and all non-land permanents that player controls. So I'm getting, I get it. You know, you're going to pick probably one to draw, one to untap. You're probably not going to be picking the same person here. I just think that with this being a group hug deck, this is just a little too much in my opinion. <laughs> giving somebody three cards seems nuts. I don't like that. Yeah, you're giving someone three cards and untapping all their stuff. You're basically yeah. saying, hey, you're going to survive and have a really good turn next turn. Well, like I said, you could split this up. So it doesn't have to be the same person, but that's true. still, yeah, that's, that's true. I don't, it kind of scares me. The last one I'm cutting is right control two and a white. It's an instant that says you gain one life for each creature your opponent controls. Prevent all damage will be dealt to you this turn. Nice little gain life effect there. Preventing a, you know, damage is also important. But you saw some stuff that I added that prevents damage. I just didn't want to have too many effects in the same way. So since I added a couple, I cut this one. Yeah, you added the group hug one. Everybody lives. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we didn't add any artifacts, but we are cutting artifacts. What are these? Yeah, I don't, even though we're group hug, I keep saying, I'm just not a fan of these two. The first one I'm getting rid of is Coveted Jewel for six mana. It's an artifact that says, it says when it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. You can tap it, add three mana of any color. It also says whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls attacks you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of Coveted Jewel, untap it. That's nuts. That's that's so much like, sure, you draw three and you can tap for three. But if anyone ever connects with you, they're going to draw three and then get this. Like, I think that's bad. Also for six mana. I don't know. I'm just not for this card. Yeah, I understand why it's in the group hook deck because you're helping your opponents with this card. But at the same time, you are telling your opponents, hey, I need you to attack me with a lot of creatures. If one gets unblocked, then you get to have three cards. And that's quite the incentive. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for helping, right? We're a group hug. This is just like you said, I want you to attack me and I'll help you. Like that's I draw I gotta draw a line somewhere. All right. Mm. The next one I'm gonna be getting rid of is Gear Per Ori. It's four mana for an artifact. Each player may play an additional land on each of their turns. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. Now you will be one of those players, so that's nice. Play another land. If you're empty, draw some cards. But these kind of like board wide states that I just Again, I didn't like help, helping my opponent ramp with that sorcery. Helping my opponent ramp here is kind of scary, and then it's incentivizing them just to play a lot of spells so they'll draw a bunch of cards too, that potentially. I don't like this card either, honestly. Yeah, once again, makes sense to be cut. And finally, before we get to the land base, I'm seeing a two enchantments. I did cut that Octomancer I talked about. We know we I mentioned reliably making tokens. I cut these two guys out that made tokens that I just... I don't know, I just wasn't a big fan of them. The first of which is Fisher's Talent. Two, a green and a blue for a class enchantment. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal it if it's a land card. Create a 1-1 one, one blue fish creature token. If you reveal it this way, then draw a card. You can pay a green and a blue to level it to two. If you would create a fish token, create a 3-3 three, three blue shark creature token instead. And then for level three, you can pay two green and a blue. If you would create a shark token, create an 8-8 octopus creature token instead. Sure. Pretty cool. Pretty mana intensive, and you need to be reliably hitting land. Otherwise, you'll just... I mean, you could draw a draw card, I guess that's nice. But uh, I, I didn't like the Octomancer, and then I kind of looked at what made the tokens, so I cut this and another card out that we're going to talk about in a minute. So I just wasn't the biggest fan of these, honestly. Cool card. Not a big fan. Yeah, totally get it. And then the last one, Hoofprints of the Stag. One in a white for a kindred enchantment elemental. Whenever you draw a card, you may put a hoofprint counter on Hoofprints of the Stag. You may pay two in a white. Remove four hoofprint counters. Create a 4-4 white elemental creature token with flying. Activate only during your turn. This is a little bit of a slow card in my opinion. I know that you'll be just adding those as you draw cards, which you saw this deck draws a ton of cards. Uh, and I guess it would be helping you make that token for Octomancer once again. But 
ultimately, I thought it was a slow card, and I got rid of Octomancer, so it just seemed like another easy one for me to cut. Yeah, uh, the Hoof Prince of the Stag is a very interesting card. I always felt like they shouldn't have done it deactivate only during your turn, because, man, I would love to just be able to go ahead and activate that and use it as a blocker if I ever got attacked, but you can't. You're not wrong. And then, you cannot. when you make it during your turn, they have summoning sickness, so you can't even swing with them. Yeah, so, I know, I get it. It's a very group huggy deck, so these effects are very slow, and you're kind of sitting around, hopefully not being a target, but, you know, I don't know. We do gotta... We're trying to make the deck hum a little bit better here, so... I'm cutting some clunky pieces. Mm -hmm. And finally, I did mention we were going to get to the land base. Talk to me about what you're cutting. I added the bond lands and I did the thing that you and I and I think it's just you and I, but maybe not. I cut all the temples. Temple of Enlightenment, Temple of Mystery, and Temple of Plenty. They all enter the battlefield tapped always. They scry you one when they enter and they tap for the respective colors. Enlightenment is a white and a blue. Mystery is a green and a blue and Plenty is a green and a white. I've always kind of cut these because I don't really want to scry at the moment, and coming in tapped is a very negative in my opinion. So I always cut these and I Slow put in the bond lands first. Slow lands. Slow. Yeah. yeah. If you open up a sealed commander precon product, you're going to find a temple. You are. <laughs> always. But yeah, cut them out. Bond lands are better. Totally get it. But is that going to do it? Is that all of your additions and cuts from this $100 That's upgrade? It. That's all of them for the group hug. All right. I am kind of terrified. I'm excited that you're going to give me card draw, but I'm also scared that you're going to be giving everything counters and beating people in the face eventually down the line. So Don't be afraid. It's a happy f scare, right? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally here to make sure you have more fun than magic. That's the spirit. So talk to me. What was the total amount of money you spent on all of these additions? We gave you 100 bucks. At the time of recording, it's going to be $100.84. So right there. Right over. I'm just kidding. I'll give it to you. 84 cents is not much. And plus you added Don's Truce, which is a pre-order price at the time of recording. So we already know that's going to come down. This will probably be under 100 bucks by the time Very the true. deck is released. But, uh, Very true. Okay, so talk to me about your final thoughts. I know you're not normally the group hug player. How did you feel about making this deck? I mean, I don't know. In the beginning, I was kind of iffy about it because I just thought, you know, hey, my opponents are going to be playing Magic and having fun. I'm going to be just making them have more fun. But then I started thinking, okay, I'm also going to be making stuff with counters, and the card draw in this deck is nuts, and I love drawing cards, and that does win games, I've heard, so... We'll see what happens. It, it does win games. And I, let me tell you, people's favorite thing on their board is usually the thing that makes them draw cards. So if a player is helping me draw cards, I'm not incentivized to kill that player. That's what I like to hear. So, hey. And then I'll just lose to that player because I'll it'll be too late. It's like paying your taxes, right? You got to yeah. pay the taxes. If you don't pay the taxes, that player is probably going to kill you. So probably. my tax in this case would have to be killing you. Probably not going to do that. Going to regret it. <laughs> But yeah, that's going to do it for us today. If you guys like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you guys wanted to see the entire deck list that Shane made, check the description. You will find a link to our Moxfield account. Play test it. Try it out. And comment down below. Did you guys like these additions? Maybe there's a card that Shane missed that you feel like should have been a real include in this deck. Or maybe there's a card that Shane took out that you disagreed with. Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. Also in the description, you'll find links to our social media accounts. That's TikTok. That's Twitter. That's Instagram. At Guys at Magic for each one of those. Follow us on those as well. And on the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. Once again, thank you guys for your added support. It really does mean the world to us. If you guys wanted to check out what they are seeing, that includes Mr. Foxglove, the backup commander to this precon deck as an upgrade. Check the link in the description for our Patreon and consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Bye-bye.